Investigating the crash of an SUV and wagon to find out who's really at fault. Was the SUV speeding or not? To calculate the speeds of the SUV and wagon, we worked backwards first using the acceleration of brakes, the distance of skid marks, and the final velocity of a stopped car. We calculated the speeds of the two cars after the collision. This visual shows the post-crash velocities and associated accelerations. Using the conservation of momentum, the speed of the SUV will be calculated to be 10.8284 meters per second. This means that the SUV was traveling at speeds greater than 35 kilometers an hour or 9.72 meters per second when colliding with the wagon. This graphic displays the conservation of momentum, the technique used to find velocities. Both inelastic and elastic collisions, momentum is conserved. However, kinetic energy is only conserved in an inelastic collision. Oh, wait. Oh, man. No, stop. Keep going. No, wait. <laughs> no, please don't. Can you really put them together? Wait, just, just keep going, keep going. Using the equation 1 half mv squared, kinetic energy of both the cars was calculated before and after. The results show that kinetic energy was not alike, therefore inelastic. Energy was lost to friction and then heat. These velocity time graphs show the velocity of the SUV in the wagon before and after the collision. The wagon stopped at a light, contained no kinetic energy. The SUV at the collision worked on the wagon, increasing the kinetic energy of the wagon from zero to 144,000 joules. The SUV traveling at 10.828 meters per second had work performed on it by the wagon at rest. After the collision, the SUV went from about 175,000 joules to 12,000 joules. These diagrams show the energy transformation done by the locked braces, brakes of the two cars. The SUV stopped in two meters, losing 12,000 joules. The wagon, however, losing 144,000 joules, took 24 meters to stop completely.